We love you, Lord, with all our hearts, with everything that we have. We give you all the praise, and we give you all the honor, and we give you all glory, and we give you adoration. For this is the day that you have made. Lord, we choose to rejoice and be glad, even in this day. We love you with all our hearts, with everything, Lord, in us and within us. We we'll bless and exalt your name. Glory be to you, in Jesus' name. Amen. We have been talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. And you, as a believer, if you're a child of God, you have the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says in the book of Ephesians 3.20, it says, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above that which you ask or imagine according to the power that is working within you. You have a power inside of you. The question is, is it working? We all have the power of the Holy Ghost. Um, some, one day I, was, um, I changed my coffee cup and so I put a, some coffee made inside it and I was, you know, I put it inside, you know, under the uh, coffee maker and after the coffee was done, I put a straw, I wanted to drink it and oh my God, it was so, so, so sugary and so I couldn't wait to finish up the coffee. So I drank the coffee and when it got to a point, it started becoming very bitter. So I was like, what kind of coffee is this? Now I already forgotten that I put coffee mate under it. But I did not stir. I didn't stir it. And so if you do not stir the power of God within you, you will be mistaken. You will just find yourself, you know, walking like a, a walking cops all the time. You need to know that there is a need for you to stir up the power of God inside of you. And that was the admonition that Paul gave to Timothy. You have the power of God, the power of the Holy Ghost. I think sometimes we forget. And whenever that happens, we find ourselves doing things that we shouldn't do. We find ourselves doubting God. We find ourselves worrying. We find ourselves, you know, being in an anxious state. We find ourselves depressed and sad. We find ourselves become irritable. Why? Because we forget for a moment that we have the power of God inside of you. And the only way you're not going to forget that you have the power of God inside of you is when you constantly build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. When you wake up in the morning, I, you just blast into tongue while you're looking for your airports, you're trying to get the word of God into your spirit, man. Just pray in the spirit. Just go. Father, we thank you for this is the day which you have made. We choose to rejoice and be glad. Lord, we glorify you. We adore you. We honor you this day. Glory be to to God in the name of Jesus. Mm. You're worshiping, you're blasting in tongue, and you're edifying your spirit, man. And that will keep you in constant touch with the power of the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. I am too glad that you have the power of God inside of you. You just need to always acknowledge that. You're always talking to him. Whenever there's an issue, you quickly under your breath, just say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here. What am I supposed to do? I do it over and over again. And it works when I'm in counseling session. Sometimes some things are just coming. I know what to say. I know uh, I know what they're going through sometimes by 
by by reason of words of knowledge but see it's that's not what they want to know they want to know how to get out of that situation and so under my breath i am just saying rebel shake lily Bobo said holy spirit give me a right word for the weary in this season help me to be able to speak words that will bring forth deliverance oh lord give me a mouth and a wisdom that my adversary cannot gain say or resist oh lord jehovah lord the spirit of the lord is upon me you have anointed me to preach the good news and i have found that even those who don't believe in god those that believed and they're no longer in faith all of a sudden they begin to say things like i need to go back to god i need to go back to god and that's my opportunity there and I begin to now tell them yes you need to go back to God you really need to because he's able to deliver you he's able he's a good God He's a God of all lights in whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning and I begin to talk to them because at this point I've moved them from the realm of carnality to the realm of the spirit and I want us we are studying the book of Acts of um, first Corinthians this week we did act of apostles last week i said in 70 days we need to read 10 books and i said you should do general books it's very important that you learn to do learn things you know that are beyond your scope that maybe do not really really you know apply to your specialty but you need to know a little bit about language, a little bit about music, a little bit about art, a little bit about countries, a little bit about politics, little, little things like that, general books, a little bit about psychology. It's so important. You want to know why the, the psyche acts the way it is acting and that will help you to be able to understand why the soma the body is doing whatever it is doing because it sometimes most things that people are going through are psychosomatic and so knowing a little bit about it helps you to understand how the world is moving and i said don't just do general books do you know read books in the area of your specialization if you are um a therapist you know read books you know different modalities of therapy if you are in the banking industry read things about bankers or banking and finance if you are in a medical field read much more than your no school books you know but something that can tailor you into if you're a student read your book every day give one hour to read and I said also read spiritual books study to show yourself approved and this week we are reading the book of first Corinthians and it's amazing the book is amazing because we are dealing mainly this week with the power of the Holy Spirit last week we talked about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the initial evidence speaking in tongues and I took you through the book of Acts of Apostles I took you through some parts of Romans and today I am reading first Corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 to 16 the Bible says, but just as it is written, things which the eye has not seen and the ear has not heard. I want you to read it from the beginning, but I can do that now. And which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. It is written that things which the eye has not seen god has prepared things that i haven't seen god has prepared things that years have not heard god has prepared things that has not entered the heart of man there is no scientist that have seen this thing there is no researcher that have gone into this realm. He said, all that God has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. There is something God has prepared for you and I that eyes have never seen before. The ears haven't heard and has not entered the heart of any man. Verse 10 says, for God has unveiled them and revealed them to us 
through the Holy Spirit. There are things that you will never be able to fathom or find out or discover, not even in the best of laboratories. They can only be revealed through the Holy Spirit to the one who has the Holy Spirit. That's why it is needed. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. If you're born again, the Bible says you have the Spirit of God, but you have it in a measure. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, when you're born again, you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And then when you're baptized in the Spirit, you have the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And at this juncture, I want to extend the invitation to anyone that wants to participate in the 12 week certification program um, organized by Family Life Bible Institute. You can go to flbinstitute.org. It's a 12 week program of Christian counseling. It's going to begin in the month of September. So you need to register now if you want to be part of it. You will get insight into certain things that you won't believe that you know exist. The Bible says there are certain things that no one us heard or seen that can only be revealed to those who have the Holy Spirit through the Holy Spirit for the Spirit searches all things even the depth of God for the Spirit searches all things even the depth of God it doesn't know everything you know when the disciples um, they were asking Jesus, you know, about the end of time. Jesus said, nobody knows it and it's not your business. Don't concern yourself with that. Just concern yourself with staying in Jerusalem until the power of the Holy Spirit comes on you. He said that when anything is going to happen, it's only my Father that knows that. So there are still things that only God the Father knows. But the Bible says the Spirit of God is always searching. It's searching the thoughts of God. He says, for what person, verse 11, we're reading 1 Corinthians 2, for what person knows the thoughts and motives of a man except for the man's spirit within you, your own spirit. Now, your spirit is the breath of God, right? But the fact that you have the breath of God does not mean you have an indwelling spirit. When you now receive Jesus into your heart as your Lord and Savior, you bring God into the breath of God inside of you, which is the candle of the Lord through which God searches your heart. And the Bible says your own spirit knows the very depth of you. It knows what you're going to do, where you're going, and you know your motives. You can be saying words with your mouth, but you cannot deceive your spirit. Your spirit knows everything about you. It says, for what person knows the thoughts and motives of men except the man's spirit within him? So also, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Why? Because the Spirit of God searches all things, even the depth of God. He searches all things. The Spirit of God searches your heart, searches everything, even the depth of God. You cannot imagine having that Spirit inside of you. So, also, no one knows the thought of God except the Spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, mm, but the Holy Spirit who is from God, so that we may know uh -huh, and understand uh -huh, the wonderful things freely given to us by God. Why would you be anxious for anything if you have the Holy Spirit who is able to tell you the deep things about God. It tells you the depth of God. The Bible makes us to know that God revealed his acts to the children of Israel, but he revealed his ways 
to Moses. That is why the Holy Spirit and the power of the Spirit is needed in the life of a believer. So because when you have the Holy Spirit that knows the depth of God, it reveals it to your own spirit. We also speak things. Now, let me go back to verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God, so that we may know and understand the wonderful things freely given to us by God. Verse 13. We also speak of things not in words, taught or supplied by human wisdom, mm -hmm, but in those taught, in those taught by the spirit combining and interpreting spiritual thoughts with spiritual words for those being guided by the holy spirit if you are working anywhere it doesn't matter where it is you want to be able to speak the mind of god you need the spirit of god so you can speak spiritual words if you are a parent you want to speak to your children. You need the spirit of God and the power of God. So you are not speaking according to man's wisdom, but you're speaking according to the spirit of God that searches all things, including the heart of God. Verse 14, but the natural unbelieving man does not accept the things, the teachings, and the revelations of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness, absurd, and illogical to him. The only reason why people argue the Word of God is because they are carnally minded. They are natural in their mind. So why do you argue with people like that? It doesn't make sense that you're arguing with someone or you are trying to prove a point to someone that is carnally minded the person cannot understand the things of god because they are foolishness how can you tell an unbeliever to to give when they are broke it is natural for a natural minded person to believe in receiving than in giving why? Because he does not understand that when he lacks the most is when he gives the most. Why? It is not enough. And there is a God that is more than enough. And God will always say, you want to have, give, and then it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together. A natural man will always be broke because is used to receiving. As Bishop Idauza said, the hand of the receiver is always under. It's always going under. Why? Because the person doesn't understand the things of the spirit. And explaining to a carnally minded person, it's a waste of time. Why? Because it's going to consider what you're saying as foolishness. It doesn't understand. A carnally minded person wants to store up and store up and store up because that is a definition of wealth. And God says, why store up on earth where thieves can break into and moles and rot? He said, why don't you lay up for yourself treasures in heaven? That's why a spiritual person does not see tithe as a burden. It pays tithe immediately. The moment is coming because he's spiritually minded. He's not carnally minded. He knows that it's not everything that he receives when it comes from God. For no one can get anything except given to him by God. The Bible says you will remember the Lord your God. For it is he who give it you power to make wealth. It is here that gives you power to make wealth wealth you only only a spiritually minded person can receive the things 
of the spirit the things that years haven't heard eyes have not seen and the things that has not entered the heart of any man why because they're spiritually discerned verse 14 a natural man i want to ask you are you spiritually minded or you are naturally minded if you are not spiritually minded you cannot receive the things of god you will just be wasting time you will see the kingdom of god but you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven amen it says that but the natural unbelieving man does not accept the things the teachings and revelations of the spirit of god for their foolishness they absurd and illogical to him and he is incapable of understanding them mm -hmm, because they are spiritually discerned and appreciated and he is unqualified to judge spiritual matters verse 15 but the spiritual man, the spiritually mature Christian, hmm, judges all things, questions, examines, and applies what the Holy Spirit has revealed, yet is himself judged by no man. The unbeliever cannot judge and understand the believer's spiritual nature. Verse 16, for who has known the mind and the purposes of the Lord so as to instruct him but we have the mind of Christ to be guided by his thoughts and purposes a carnally minded person does not understand the things of the spirit maybe that's the reason you don't understand many things yet you need to receive the spirit of the living god and begin to walk that power that is inside of you so god is able to do exceeding abundantly above that which you ask or imagine according to that power that you are putting to walk the power of the holy ghost and you never talk about power power in physics is a vector quantity you are you 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 can't talk about power without talking about ability to work in a given time the time there is a factor the more how you get to know your spiritually minded is you don't question the Spirit of God when the Spirit of God says go do that you are like on autopilot you just go and do it when you did when you when you delay I mean I ask people why are you praying about tithes um, yeah you know we need to go check why are you checking what are you checking God says you are a robber <laughs> when you take his tithes you are a robber what 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 are you trying to check it shows that you're naturally minded you're carnally minded somebody is asking for help why are you thinking twice about helping the person but you don't think twice about receiving help why are you thinking twice about fellowshipping why because you're carnally minded why are you putting other things above god because you're carnally minded. Why are you getting so angry? <laughs> because you're carnally minded. It is difficult to forgive if you're not spiritually minded. You be you're believing that God has not done certain things, right? And you've been praying. Are you spiritually minded? Do you even know what God is doing? Do you know his purpose for your life? Do you know the steps you're supposed to be taking right now? There are times that God will say stay in the land. When there was famine, Abraham moved. There was famine again. Isaac was about to move. God said no. The fact that Abraham moved does not mean you should move. You stay. That's something that is scary. You cannot even follow what others have done in order to get their result. Why? Because God, he will say different things in different situations to you. There were times Jesus 
will heal by just speaking words. There are times Jesus will lie down on the dead. There are times Jesus will use a spit. He did not do a miracle the same way. He says, as I hear my father, that is what I do. Are you listening to God? Do you know what to do in certain situation? The fact that you have done it before that same way, the fact that you've used this method doesn't mean you should, you're going to keep using the method. You need to walk in the spirit. You need to be able to receive the spirit of the living God so you can walk in understanding. Proverbs of today, the Bible says that even God, when he wanted to create the universe, wisdom was present. Wisdom was present. He said, I was with him as he created. And wisdom is calling today. It's a daily affair. He said, blessed is the man who watches daily at my gates. It's a daily thing. Every day you're asking God, I'm here again. Let thy will be done in my life. I want to do as you please today. I know that yesterday has passed. It's a new day. It's a brand new day. Keep me in the path of righteousness for your namesake. Holy Spirit, help me to live my life today according to your dictates. Open my heart. Help me to be willing and obedient in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a daily walk. You have the Holy Spirit, you are born again. But if you're not even born again, you want that power. And if you're willing to be born again, I just want you to believe in your heart that Jesus died for you. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. And I want you to confess it right now by saying, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I repent of my sin today. And I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Today I'm born again in Jesus' name. And I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. That as you begin to walk in his presence, you walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. I pray the power of the Holy Spirit come upon you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. You have those vision board. We started talking yesterday that one of the ways to make the power begin to walk is you need to teach, you need to preach, and you need to heal. Go forth and the signs will follow those that believe. Say, don't run after what God what God wants to bring after you. Pursue God. Run after God. Begin anywhere you find yourself. Teach the word. And if you don't know what to say, that's why you need to study to show yourself approved. So you're not ashamed. Be a workman. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Walk the word and the word will work for you. Be a positive influence. Get influenced by the word. You are written a pistle. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. And on it shall you meditate day and night that you might be careful to do that which is written therein. And then you'll be successful. But the Holy Spirit needs to expound the word to you. And that's why you need to stir it up. Stay up the gifts inside of you. You can't survive in this world without the power of the Holy Spirit. Because it needs to teach you. It needs to guide you. It needs to comfort you. You're in this world to have dominion, to be productive, to replenish. You can't do that by, without the power of the Holy Spirit. It is time for you to always wake up in the morning, pray in the Spirit. Pray the Spirit. Stay on the Word. Read books. Fellowship with the brethren. And the time that you're using to work on your job to pursue all this material wealth, you will be able to cut it into half by working on yourself spiritually, mentally, physically. Exercise too is good. And you will discover 
that you will be able to double your income. Remember, in 70 days, we're reading 10 books and we are walking the spirit. This week, we're studying the book of First Corinthians. I want to remind you that on Sunday by 3 p.m. Central Time, which happens to be 9 p.m. West African Time, we will be having a, a mental health and you seminar via Zoom. You want to know more about upcoming events, please download the app, Just Flaky, J-U-S-T-F-L-A-K-Y. Download it now so you can get Bible studies every day. There is a Bible on it. Um, there are messages on it, um, appointments on it. You can also, you know, get the up, um, um, upcoming events on it it's 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 so easy make sure you review it please or give us good reviews share it with people and use it every day and there is affirmation on it i mean that is something that you want to always confess every day every morning every evening you know the affirmation that is there you'll love it I want you to make Just Flaky app a part of your day every day. It's so important. Also, remember to pray for me one minute every day. Pray for my family, please, that God will keep us on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I love you so much and I'm praying for you. Please walk in the spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I pray that you will love righteousness and hate iniquity even this day. I pray that your secret will be better than your open. And I pray that your ears will be open, your heart will be receptive to the word of God. I bless the name of the Lord for you. Remember, we give every day at Payform. You can also give on that app. You can, you know, or you can go to Just Flaky. Now, pform.org slash give to give. We give a dollar or more every day. I always bring my offering every day, every day, every day. And we'll pay ourselves. Always pay yourself before you pay other people. Pay God, pay yourself, and pay other people. It's a principle of the wealthy. If you want to be wealthy, give God what belongs to God. Pay your tithes. Pay your tithes. Pay your tithes. Pay your tithes. It will help your life. Pay your tithes. <laughs> Give your offerings. It's so important. Pay yourself. Save. And then whatever is left will make your head work fast. Because now you need to generate more income. And as long as you're walking in the spirit and you're being obedient to this word, you will not lack any good thing in the name of Jesus. Remember to share our app and remember to invite people. I'm going to meet you again same time tomorrow. Remain blessed and I love you. Bye.